Hello, everyone. You're listening to Those Are the Girls with Mallory and Friends. I'm Mallory. I'm Victoria. And I'm Melanie. And we are changing culture and bringing back traditional values. Ooh. Clap from the studio audience. <laughs> Yay. Happy weekend, everyone. I would say the last two weeks in my life have been absolutely crazy. I feel like I haven't gotten the rest at all. Yeah, you've been super busy. Yeah. Well, I traveled to Phoenix for work last week, which was amazing and beautiful and so much fun to be back in a plane. But oh my God, worst turbulence of my life. Oh, really? Yeah. So I took a flight from Charlotte to Greensboro and the plane literally like dropped in the air (sighs) because of turbulence. Also, I will say... That has to be a very tiny plane because if yes, it's going from it was Charlotte, a 70 to 90 seater regional jet airplane. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it dropped. Like it this dropped was- like it just like it went down because it was just like you hit like an air pocket. And I didn't realize so someone told me so when you're traveling um during the summer and the even if you're traveling like over the Midwest, um, because of like the heat pockets changing that's why you get all this turbulence in the summer months because I'm like I've never really had issues with this oh Mm -hmm. okay that makes I can't remember the what time of year it was but the worst one it was so bad me and the girl sitting next to me we didn't know each other we were holding hands (laughs) and like we were both like tearing up like it was that bad we were like we legitimately like held hands and we it was a stranger I had no idea who she was she was freaking out more than me and then that made me freak out even more it was so I don't remember I don't even I guess I blocked it I don't even remember where I was going I want to maybe it might have been DC yeah. Go to DC well, so much, but it was crazy. Rule of, rule of thumb is if the flight tents are freaking out, that's when you need to freak out. Well, so. <laughs> I remember seeing them sit down, and I feel like I've never that seen that is normal. No, I've never rough, seen that before. Yeah, <laughs> in rough turbulence, like that's normal for them to like sit and strap in. But if you see like panic or fear in their eyes, then you need question what's going on. Yeah. Mallory, who who offered their hand to who? Oh, good question. I think she was like freaking out. And then I kind of put my hand near hers and then she kind of like grabbed on. And then I was like, all right, we're doing okay. this. And then it made me even like nervouser because she was nervous, <laughs> even more nervous. And then I was just like, okay, God. I like changed my music to like worship music. And so there just... were no words exchanged. It was just like oh, this no. mutual like no like I, I kind of moved my hand closer because I was like I don't she was freaking out and just the person in me I was like she definitely needs to be comforted and then I was like well I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna fully hold her hand because that that'd be weird so I just put my hand near her hand and then she just grabbed on to and I was like all right so she really is afraid and it's also kind of making me a little nervous <laughs> so I over to worship music because this could be it and I don't you know <laughs> this could be it <laughs> This, this is how it. Mallory Finch goes down, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, asking God to forgive me for all my sins. <laughs> yeah, that was the worst. Uh, I hate turbulence, but I'll fly. I still fly. Oh, I love flying. Me and too. turbulence doesn't. It doesn't bother me. Like I know, like like Sebastian hates flying, and like he, every anytime like we travel together and we hit turbulence, she's like. Oh my god, we're going to die just like JFK and like the Kennedys died and plane crashes. Oh, and all this stuff. <laughs> Do you laugh? <laughs> oh, I laugh. I go, I'm like, babe, <laughs> I've told you, like, you don't need to worry about plane crashes for a commercial jet. Like, those are very rare. The plane crashes you hear about is when your neighbor next door says, Hey, I just got my pilot's license. Let's go right. flying. That's right. when you got to worry about plane crashes. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly not, too, like, that was the only time I was ever, like, all right, this could be it, but other, like, I've been in turbulence before, for the most yeah. part, I'm not, like, nervous when it yeah, comes I'm, to that, it I just It doesn't like make it. me nervous, it's just, like, uncomfortable, Yeah, and, yeah. um, just, like, everything's, like, moving, and it's just, like, it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. Because you yeah. can't feel, like, the tension in the plane when it's yeah, that's, happening. And to be honest, like, not empath isn't real and I don't want to be I'm an empath but like if everyone else around me (laughs) if everyone else around me is freaking out it kind of gets to me too I'm kind of like oh my god should I be freaking out like I don't know I just that's the other thing too 
but okay well that sounds like that was um a crazy ride from charlotte to greensboroughville yes greensboro borough yep 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 there's a lot of greens in charlotte yeah. slash but i did have a layover in dallas and was able to get north carolina break. No, Dallas, Texas. I know, hey. I know. <laughs> and I was able to get exactly. Whataburger, which is so good. Oh, nice. Glad you liked it. Well, nice. my husband's family's in Texas, so, like, oh. I've had it before. Oh, and okay. I kind of, like, I kind of strategically did that flight to stop in Dallas. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> For the Whataburger? For the Whataburger. I was, like, because it, it was, like, a 340 flight, okay? And it got me there at, like, seven 3 40 a.m p.m oh okay it was a 3 40 flight so it was like an afternoon i was flight. thinking a.m too <laughs> <laughs> i know how that goes <laughs> but no i was able to get water burger and it's just oh so good the sweet and spicy burger is literally the best i've never had it i've only been in dallas once yeah it's for a conference Well, all right. Um, do we want to go ahead? Anybody else want to share anything from their week or do we want to go ahead and get into? Oh, let's. Um, Melanie and I were at a women's march. Yeah, I want to hear towns. about this. I hate I couldn't go. Swamped with school. We didn't. Well, I don't think we kind of had a mini one in Greensburg when nobody showed up. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's good. I'm kind of surprised though. Greensboro seems like it would be all of. Well, I don't know. I can't tell. I'm, I'm I learned not to trust my like, <laughs> Greensboro, we don't, I mean, Guilford County, we really don't have a lot of, like, young people. Really? I would say we don't really have, like, the industry here, like Charlotte and Raleigh does. Yeah. Well, it also- attracts, like, a lot of young people for jobs. Well, I'm, when I think about Greensboro, I think about the water park. You guys have the water park. Yeah. Wet and wild. Uh, there's a zoo, right? We have family. No, no zoo. Well, no, yeah. we have the science center that kind of has a zoo. It's Maybe like a, I'm thinking of. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's like a lot of families and people with like older kids. Okay. Hmm. It's not. Fascinating. I would guess, if I would have to guess, I would say our average age in Guilford County is like 50. Really? 40 to 50, like adult-wise. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So that probably makes a little bit of sense why the Women's March wasn't as uh, <laughs> popping. <laughs> also, I just moved my mic. It's also not pop, like. Pop. <laughs> hey. I mean, it's also not like Charlotte, where it's like that's where all the young people go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Those finance guys. I can tell really quick. Then this is it. So. I told myself I wasn't going to do any of the daily naps until I got to a certain weight. But then yesterday, I don't know what it was. I was just like, well, let me just let me just try. So I can't download Bumble. I can't do OK Keep It. So I try Hinge. OK, so it's this guy I match with. Um, and he's one of those financial bros that live in Charlotte. Like, ugh, first of all. But whatever. I'll give him... You know, I don't want to judge him. I should have, but I, I don't want to. And we're talking. He's like, hang out. He said something about hanging out. I was like, yeah, that'd be really cool if we could. Um, I said like, oh, my cactus is there. Okay. Uh, hang out. And I said something like, yeah, it would be cool if we could, um, if, you know, you can take me out, something like that. And he was like, take you out. And I was like, well, yeah, like, it's, this is a dating app. I'm not, you know, planning to like go to your apartment and hang out on your couch and watch Netflix like that's not and he's like well what uh, I was like oh I'm, I'm very traditional that means that like you know I believe that the man is the leader I, I you know I'm abstinent blah 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 and he was like well what does traditional mean to you and I was like I just said what it means like well I mean flush it out and I was like okay but I feel like you're like are you trying to get me to say something it was just so weird and then um he was like, well, um, you say a date, like what, what are you expecting for a date? And I was like, we, you would pick a nice place and we'd go there. <laughs> and, and he was like, and then who would pay? And I said, well, if it's a, a date, you would pay. And then I'm waiting and waiting. He unmatched with me. 
<laughs> I feel like you wasted your time talking with him, however I, much you did. It was, yeah, I did. I it was match. Maybe an, an hour. I, well, so I had started just, no matter who it was, just matching with them because I'm like, just. Desperate. I have, I have a, okay, I have a set on Christian. So no matter who it is, they're supposed okay. to be Christian. You can set it on, on Hedging hmm. on Christian. And That's I'm pretty cool. sure I have it on Christian and conservative. So I know that. So I just kind of just match to see who, who likes me back type thing. And I mean, but he was like, I was looking at his stuff. He's a financial bro. He does investing full time. That's what he told me. And he's in grad school for accounting. And I'm like, wow, you're the typical annoying Charlotte average man. Not I do stress. not know this stereotype of Charlotte. Can you explain this to me? You said like finance bros. like They're like guys that live or guys that like work in. So Charlotte is the number two capital in finance. So oh. we get a lot of people mm-hmm. that are like financial, like a Bank of America, Wells Fargo. They're really into like money management thing. And they're very like bro. So my friends from college, we call like frat type guys, we call them bros. So they're definitely guys who've been in frats and who probably <sighs> wear like colored shorts. And Lame. Like, <laughs> and you know, if you're listening, that's you, no judgment. That's just not something. Like I like, I don't want to say this, I'm open to whoever. I just have never gotten, a, I've never had a meaningful conversation or like really had a, a good conversation mm. with a bro. And typically the bros are like, you know, they're, they usually want the, if you're listening, I'm doing like the shape of the hourglass, long hair, blonde, um, high pitch voice, you know, everything that I'm not, um, they usually want that. So that's why I was kind of surprised that he matched with me, but I was like, yeah, let's see. Um, and then when a standard I have is the guy pays for the first date. I'm sorry. That's the standard I have. That's the standard I'm sticking with. And he unmatched. So there's And, that. like, it's crazy to think, like, he's in finance. So, like, you know, he has, in theory, should have money to take it on one date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, My exactly. said unmatched <laughs> when you said you got to pay for the meal. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, he didn't even give me a, like, if he had asked me, like, where, well, first of all, I wasn't going to go, after we started having the conversation, I was like, I'll just see how this goes, but I'm not going anywhere with this guy, especially, like, I personally, if you're listening, you're a guy, I personally hate, yeah, let's hang out, hang out, what is hanging out, let's go I on, know, let's go right? on a date, I, what yes. is hanging out, absolutely, I I'm not going to go to your house, at 22 tw- year old Mount. 21 19 20 21 year old Mallory would have been like oh my god hang out sure <laughs> 26 year old Mallory is not going to just hang out to hang out like if we're we have intentions like and I'm also like now that I'm older and smarter I'm not going to go to some guy's house that I just don't know mm-hmm. Naive, especially Mallory. in the middle of the pandemic Oh, in the middle of a pandemic, especially. Younger, naive Mallory, the first time to really quick, and then we really got to get on topic. So I'm my freshman year in college, I went to a party and um, I was a freshman. And it was a senior guy. And he was like super talking to me. And it was like, for context, I did not get any. When I tell you no guys liked me, I mean, no, every girl got asked to prom in my grade except for me. Like Aww. that's the type of love I got in co- in high school. Young, yeah, <laughs> that's the type of love I got in high school. So when I get to college in this senior, okay, me. Okay. <laughs> and this senior guy is like talking to me, and you know I'm like, oh my gosh, you know it's my very first time being in an environment like that. So he asked me, he's like, yeah, come on, you want to hang out? So the next day, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hang out with this guy. So I go to his dorm, and we're, like, hanging out. We're, like, trying to watch. And I'm legitimately, like, I legitimately thought we were going to watch this show. Like, I was prepared. Like, all right, I've never seen the show. Cool. Everybody's told me this is a good show. Oh, so you didn't know what watch. Netflix and chill was? I had no idea. So, like, I, I, was watching I did the- not know that expression back in the day, too. And I'm, like, watching the show, and he's, like, trying to kiss me. And I'm like, what 
I can't. What are you doing? How are you paying attention? That's what I'm thinking. Like, how are you paying attention? How are we going to discuss this episode if you keep looking at me? We need to pay attention. So, like, now that I'm older and wiser, I understand if a guy is like, yeah, come hang out. It's futile. You're not always what I want to do is inappropriate things. But yeah, 18 year old Mallory was like, I, I don't understand. Like, we're trying to, I have to get the plot. Like, I've never seen this show. Why are we're you? We're trying to watch the Netflix <laughs> right. while chilling. <laughs> right, right. Like, can you sit up? Why are you leaning? <laughs> what was the uh, show? Uh, Breaking Bad. And to this day, I still have never seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> I think I, I think legitimately watched maybe three minutes in and I couldn't get the gist of it because he's like over here trying to like kiss me and every and I'm just like yo like let's watch the show and then like it was just yeah anyway that was <laughs> oh a very my goodness he could have killed you he could have <laughs> okay yeah I mean he could have because we met at like a an off-campus party type thing too oh no I know I know he definitely could have killed you and so, so also too those listening with kids like I was the definition of sheltered. Like, when I tell you I had no idea, like, I had no, I was shocked. I I still, I went, like, so it just got uncomfortable, and I was like, I think I'm going to leave, and I went, and I was, like, telling my friends what happened, and they were like, Mallory, he wanted to, and I'm like, wait, what? Like, I had (laughs) no idea, and all my friends were very much more experienced in every aspect than I was at that time. Mm Mm-hmm. They Sorry, still are now. That. that just goes to show, ladies, that we need to be teaching our youth proper names of body parts. We need to be teaching them dangers. And if you don't talk about these things, how are they ever going to know to alert mom and dad when something's happening if you don't yep, tell yep. them about the potential dangers? And also, ladies, you deserve to have that date paid for. Yes. And you deserve to have that young man make it clear to you his intentions. Yes. And I feel yes. like I've coached several guys, like, in recent weeks saying, y'all, it's not that hard. Here's all you got to say. Hi, Becky. I think you're beautiful. I'd love to get to know you more. Can I take you out on a date sometime? Period. Done. It's not that hard, gentlemen. It's not. If you get the L, you take the L. But if you get that W, you take that W. But you'll never know if you don't take that chance, y'all. And it's not that hard. Don't it's make not. life complicated. It's not. And if you ask a, a good girl, now obviously it's going to be girls that are mean. But if you ask a good girl, and you'll know because you hopefully you would have talked to this girl for more than two seconds. Um, if you ask a good girl, even if she says no, it's not going to be like, oh my god no it's gonna be like you know what I don't think this is the right time or something like that they're not gonna be mean to you about it because I think that's another thing too guys are afraid that the girl is gonna be mean or laugh at them but most good girls or nice people in general are not gonna do that so don't be afraid to do that anyway recap of women's march Mel you want to say talk about George real quick or do you want me to go first yes so are we getting into the the thick of the tea cap now yeah let's just go ahead okay we'll have this be the fast three Okay. Wait, are you? Oh, I was trying to get like a glass. <laughs> oh my effect. god, I was trying to do the same thing. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay, ready. One, two. You got the sound. One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> okay. okay. That's... Anyways, all so... right. Let's. So we're gonna do. At... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I was at the Rally for Abortion Justice in Austin, Texas, and there was thousands of people present in oh, front I'm of the sure. Texas. Was Capitol. that where like the major rally was for like, Texas? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm like saying in general, like DC. Pa- it was DC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then there. The pro students for life had organized, I believe, about twenty-two counter protests across the nation, and that's just the ones that we know about because maybe there were some pro-life people who showed up on their own. Um, so, um, like I said, there were thousands of people present outside the Capitol. This fully like organized event by the pro-abortion industry, and we um, gathered. Uh, we had maybe about. 
30 pro-lifers, I think. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, and so we uh, arrived and we f we were assuming, we were thinking they were going to have a march. And then we found out that it was just going to be a rally. They were not going to physically be walking anywhere. So there was for us to like cut, cut them off and, you know, be like, hi, surprise. So we saw there was a spot right next to the stage and we just walked straight up to the state like right next to the stage and we had a giant banner like huge banner like think of march for life washington dc like that kind of big of banner that said dear women the abortion industry is lying to you oh i so, love that i know saucy and i was one of the persons who had the bullhorn and I immediately, when we got up there, I chanted into the bullhorn, dear women, the abortion industry is lying to you. And right away, many people start running up and screaming, and holding their signs. And anyway, so I, I was just leading our pro-life group in, in chants. And there were even some downtime of like, they were kind of quiet. I kind of was like, running out of content of chance <laughs> so instead i started saying like um apologetics and i oh, like yeah. exposed like the history on margaret sanger uh foundress eugenicist and racist uh, who started planned parenthood i talked about how abortion procedures are done i talked about the 100 million dollars in the alternatives to abortion fund that we have in the city of texas and I just tried to expose any other, like, lies. Like, someone on the microphone in the rally talked about that the rapists can sue. And then homegirl, me, pulls out the law. And I just started shouting into the bullhorn the actual law and quoting it for everyone <laughs> nearby <laughs> to hear the actual law. And I was like, fake news. Oh, another... Um, crazy part was that Cecile Richards spoke. Cecile Richards was one of the most recent uh, presidents of Planned Parenthood oh. and she spoke at this rally. At, I didn't, that was a surprise to me. I did not expect that. We did not know she was going to be there. And so I started saying, Cecile, will you disavow Margaret Sanger? Disavow her. Please disavow Margaret Sanger. She never acknowledged me. She did not disavow Margaret Sanger. And then I'm yelling out to everyone who can hear me. I'm like, y'all heard her, folks. That is so sad. I could not believe she would not disavow Margaret Sanger. That is so sad, y'all. Mm, I mean, we can at least agree on that. Shoot. Cecile, like, what? And so, <laughs> girl. Yeah, that's what, girl, what you doing? Come on. <laughs> so that was a lot of the things that I just started chanting or like not really chanting but just like exposing i i really went off of the theme of the abortion industry is lying to you and so i'm gonna go ahead and expose some other basic truths to you another thing that i exposed was that there's three pro-life democrats in our texas legislature and like you wouldn't know that unless you know you're pro-life and you're working with these pro-life democrats and so because someone on the mic made a comment of like we need to vote out the republicans and then i was i said well then you're forgetting the three pro-life democrats <laughs> what about them i know they're and they saw that they were like be quiet yeah they're like, up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and then i also strongly <laughs> encouraged everyone to google the words embryology Google fetal development and also for themselves to Google Margaret Sanger and to check out abortionprocedures.com. So those were a lot of the things that I kept yelling, well, into the bullhorn for everyone who was around me to hear. So like I said, I just was like, we're here to say the abortion industry is lying to you. Here's some truths that they don't want you to know. Abortionprocedures.com, Margaret Sanger, pro-life Democrats, there's a hundred million dollars in, in our state's alternative abortion fund. So that was that. It ended up being a, a four-hour event. <laughs> Ours is pretty long, too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I was chanting, yeah, going at it for about four hours. And so, yeah, I'm still getting... 
over yeah. the four hours <laughs> in the bullhorn. My voice is still recovering. And so, yeah, it was a success. We stuck around. We were the last people there. Yes, that's and what I love to see. That's what we wanted to yep. do. And even one of the state troopers asked, how long are you guys going to stay here? And I said, we're going to be the last people. And then he kind of like, hmm, like smiled, like grinned and smirked a little. And I was like, we've done it before. We'll do it again. <laughs> and we did. So love that it. Was, that was my experience at the women's march rally for abortion justice love it rally for abortion lies is what yeah. it should be called injustice yes <laughs> so mine was mm, similar but also different so that morning we actually students for life had adopted that week for love life so we like did love life and then we like ran, not literally, but like we drove over to the, um, where the quote unquote women's march was being held down the bank. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we went over to the park. So initially, you know, we're wearing our, uh, did they actually march is my question. They did march. Okay. I'm going to get there. They did. So in Charlotte, they did march. So we get over to the park. So there was the rally and the park, maybe I'll show everybody the, um how to like describe it but like to get into the park there's like a walkway and then there was like sides I, I don't know. everyone use your imagination Hello. so we walk up and um <laughs> definitely heard your dad um we walk up and um you know the lady they're like oh you're not welcome and then Brooke who is the North Carolina uh, students for life person one of my best friends she was like um well it's a women's march for women and then they were like you need to put on a mask so I was like okay cool I'll put on a mask so I have my beautiful hand-painted mask from um life dress and yes. a friend of the pod and I put my pro-life mask on and then that just sent them so they're like <laughs> oh you can't come in no you're not welcome here and then the owner who she was about to cry she was like um, I rented this out and we are not allowing you here. And I was like, well, it's a women's march and we're women. And she's like, no, you cannot come here. It is an abortion justice march. And then Brooke was like, well, on the website, it says women's march. And then I was like, so I'm just clarifying, like, you guys have rebranded to the abortion. She's like, yes, we are for reproductive rights and you are not welcome here. So I was like, okay, cool. So that's what I said to her. But in my head, I was like, oh my God, this, my plan has been foiled. I don't know what we're going to do. So <laughs> the police are across the street. And this is interesting, everyone. I want everyone to hear this. And you know, we are not anti-police. I'm just telling you how this event went. So the police are across the street. So I'm like, okay, let me just ask the police, like, what are our, because if it's a park, we're allowed to go to the park. Like we, they can't block the park. So I walk up and it's like, they're on yeah. the other side across the street. And it's these five guys, the five police officers with their bikes, you know, right in charge if need be. And I'm like, okay, so I'm like, hi, we are just trying to find like what what are the rules? Are we allowed to go in there? So one of the guys is like, yeah, go on ahead. Really nice, happy guy. And then another one of the guys is like, well, not so fast. And I was like, okay, so he's well, they're the just problem. trying to keep the peace. Absolutely great point you just made so he said um he was like well technically you can't go in there they did not rent out the space they rented they got a permit for the the stage and the mics and stuff like that but if you go in there that's a disturbance of the peace and essentially even if we stood there didn't say a word hands down weren't doing anything and they came and screamed and yelled at us we would also get in trouble because we were disturbing the peace because it's disturbing the peace if we go in there and they get mad at us so it was kind of like okay that doesn't seem fair even if we're not doing anything we can still get in trouble whatever so you know recalibrate what are we going to do so also too it was a random like one two three one two three or five like five random pro-lifers who one of them was a sidewalk advocate for love life and then the other I had never seen before and then one we I literally she was checked me in at the um pregnancy resource banquet I went to earlier that week so I was like oh that's crazy oh. hey hey so we traded numbers and everything anywho so what we did was we just stood up against like this the wall for the interest and we had our signs and we're talking and then 
when the march happened, everybody had to pass us. So we're setting our ground. We have our um, signs. Like we had the futures anti-abortion signs. Uh, one of the girls created a really pretty sign about, um, I don't remember what it said, but it was like uh, something about women in the vape, like the mother. And then some of the other people, they had the, the um, they had the, the broken baby, the graphic images, graphic images. And you know, you know how I feel about that. But I mean, they had them and people did respond. So some people probably needed to see that. There were people who probably did. Anyway, that's beside the point. So we all are like up against, so they have to pass us. And I mean, <laughs> people are screaming. Some white lady, so just I'll, some white lady told me that I should be ashamed and I should, she's like, do you not care about your people? That's what she like screamed at me, an older white lady. Yeah, and try not to kill them. Right. And um, she's like, do you not care about your people? And then like, oh my gosh, was, like, Mallory, working. what did you say? Did you say anything back to her? I just laughed. <laughs> I didn't know what to <laughs> say. I was just like, this is so ironic. <laughs> um, and then like, uh, people were like twerking, um, like dancing. This one lady who I'm pretty sure like not even, I don't, she wasn't really a part of the march. She was, I'm pretty sure she was like, so Charlotte has a, a homeless problem. Like, no, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm pretty sure she was like homeless and like had mental health issues. And she was like, she was like, you should be taking care of those five children. I know you have at home. You have five kids at home, but we're worried about someone else's P word. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's what I, that I and is, then I kind of like. That's it was racist. Weird. That's like actually what racism is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what like she, she said. She said that directly to directly you, to Mallory, me. that you had five kids. In. Yeah. And I wanted, in my, I was like triggered. I wish I had five kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was just like, um, no, but I'm pretty like not this isn't necessarily an excuse, but like I felt more compassion for her because I'm I'm like no joke. I'm pretty sure she was like homeless and like mental health issues. And she was just happened to walk by. And it was so funny. There was like random people like, what is this? And it was like, hi, welcome. <laughs> just trying to chill in the park. <laughs> yes. There's a man and his son. He was like, I I just brought my son out. We were going to have a relaxing day. And I was like, well, um, welcome. Would you Come again um, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And then it was this other really nice thing. It was a super cute guy. Um, he came up and was like, what, what are y'all doing? I was like, oh, we are, um, so we're protesting the Women's March. There's a woman, or uh, abortion justice thing going on right now. And he was like, oh, okay. Well, I like what you're doing. I'm pro-life. I agree with you. I don't understand how these people, super cute. So I'm like, oh, okay. And, and this is know. when Mal dropped down on one knee and go, <laughs> No, I actually did the exact opposite. I didn't ask him his name. I didn't give him any literature to stay in contact. Literally, all I said was, yeah, this is so great, isn't it? No. <laughs> I know. I crack under pressure. I crack and I, I crack under pressure. But you I know, wish you dropped on one knee. <laughs> <laughs> there was this one time, uh, and then like, never mind. I'll tell the story another time. I'm sure it'll come up. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so that was crazy, right? Well, but it's us, not even over. Wait, wait, it's not even over. So they march and we're still, <laughs> Melanie, <laughs> they march and we're still like kind of gathering like, okay, I guess it's over. I guess they're done. And then they come to like protest our counter protest. And then they're like yelling at us and chanting. And then that's when it kind of got a little like, oh. Okay, these people are a little crazy this guy got like super close to me like right up in my face and I was like I'm very uncomfortable why are you this close to me wait I thought we were supposed to be six feet apart that's what I thought as well um not only that I thought it was no oh uterus, no opinion so like oh what was so crazy was like there was a guy with us and he said something so I was like no uterus no opinion and then a guy on their side said something and everybody clapped and I was like I'm so I wish I had gotten this on film like this was literally like a scene out of like family guy like one guy said something they didn't like no uterus no opinion and another guy said something that you like yeah <laughs> I was like this is but isn't that what a Democrat is? A hypocrite. Hmm. Ah. Ah. Mm. Mallory, there's this one woman at my at the march I was at that was saying to me, like, why aren't you wearing a mask? That exact same thing. And I was like, 
girl, you gonna get on me? You gotta get on all these other people. I'm looking at one, two, three, four. And I started counting all the other people in the audience who I saw I not it. wearing masks. Like there was so many of the pro boards who I weren't mean, wearing masks. So that I was, was like, the other get thing. on me. You gotta get on everyone else here, honey. And she shut up. <laughs> that was the other thing too. Like for people who are so like blah 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 about the mask, they were definitely like um not caring like a lot of them just weren't wearing masks yeah because it's not a super spreader event if it's a democrat event that's a very good point (laughs) and it's um who was it that it was um cnn who said that oh i don't know i'm just saying in general like oh someone like straight up said that like if you're getting together for a protest you are safe (laughs) everything is okay yeah like it was i didn't know my mom told me that um sporting events and like concerts do not have to report covid clusters so that's why the covid cluster reporting is only churches and schools because those are the only ones that have to mandate their reporting that's interesting yeah because well and it's all about the money because if the reality is i'm sure there's at a concert I mean, there's no, if it spreads the way it does, I'm sure there's going to be one or two people there with it. That's just yeah. the reality of the situation. Whether they're symptomatic or asymptomatic or not, I would hope if you're symptomatic, you'd stay home. But that's just the reality but, I mean, of we're going to go see the Jonas Brothers next week. Yeah. So, like, that's just the reality. So, they, it's all about the money. Because if they knew that, if, or if they were reporting that all this stuff was happening, then for public perception, they'd have to, we must stop. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, And the judges is for control. That's crazy. I will say real quick before we get into our stories, Mal, I saw a video that you were tagged in on the march of the woman yelling at you guys saying, you guys are the ones going to hell. Oh, yeah. That was interesting. There, Can you talk about that real quick? Yeah, that was okay. So there, so that was during the protests to our protests. Um, so <laughs> one, there were two ladies there that were like, preaching they were and which I think really it disturbed some people which I think is good I think that showed that like you know what something is stirring in them so then she was saying something and then one of the questions she was preaching no 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 not that lady okay okay. she was there were two ladies who were preaching at the person who said we were going to hell and she was just getting so angry like it was like Every time that um, the person on our side said something like, Jesus loves you, she would just, ah! like, legit, like, no lie. Like, you, you saw the video. She'd just get really angry. And then all of a sudden she goes, you guys are the ones going to hell because we were standing up for the pre-board. So this is what, from everything that I gathered at the march, from, I had, like, maybe two productive conversations, um, the rest were just screaming. So this is what I gathered. People are very uneducated. People really do not know. There was two people who did say, yes, it is a ch- a human. I don't care. Everyone else did not say that, did not admit it, did not understand. It, women are very uneducated, especially young women, which is why, not to brag about those of the girls, but that's why I think this podcast and so many others out there that we would love to do collaborations with, let us know, are so important because I do think people, people are just incredibly uneducated. Mm -hmm. I think that people, some of those girls out there, so also to the sweetest thing happened, a girl messaged me on Instagram and she was like, Um, So I was at the Women's March and I saw you there and I just wanted to talk to you if that's okay. And like we talked for a good chunk of time and then, you know, Instagram shut down. We'll discuss that later. Um, But we talked for a good chunk of time and she was like, you're the nicest pro-lifer I've ever met. And she did make a comment, which I am praying for her about. She made a comment. She was like, could you like explain your argument without using religion because I have religious trauma? So, Mm -hmm. you know, I can make the non-religious argument um, against abortion for sure. But that's something that I noticed. And I was like, okay, well, I'm definitely going to pray for her in that regard. But there's just people who like, and when we were done our conversation, she was like, well, I didn't change my mind, but thank you for talking to me. And I was like, of course, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Like, I'm, how did she find you? 
I tagged Charlotte's Women's March, I'm pretty sure. Uh, because so and because of that, I found so one of the girls that's an escort um for the uh, abortion facility that we go to, she was at the women's march and we had saw her earlier that day. And when she walked past us, I was like, hey, and she was like, Ugh, hey, I guess I'll see you next week. I was like, see you next week. Um, but I actually found her from that hashtag too. Obviously, I didn't follow her. Um, but I found her from that hashtag. And she's someone who I'm definitely going to pray for because A, she recognized me. So I'm like, okay, that's building a relationship. Yeah. And then B, You're building um, rapport. Exactly. And then B, she had like made like the sexual, like when we were finished praying and walking away, she was like making a sexual sound. She was like, remember me, daddy, something like that. Remember me this week, you know, being super sexual. And when another lady was praying with us, um, she made a comment. She was like, when she was praying, she was like, God, I know that she was trying to be, um, inappropriate when she said that but I'm going to remember her and pray for her so that's what I when she the lady said that that was praying with us I was like okay I'm going to do that too I'm going to remember her and pray for her so if anyone's listening let's pray for redhead the little redhead girl I don't know her name so we'll just call her everybody get that reference Charlie Brown yeah okay good, good, good. so everybody you could definitely ask her her name like next time you see her you can say hi my name is Mallory what's your name you know? right yeah, I think I am going to, like, legitimately, I think I'm just going to ask God for, like, discernment of how to, like, talk with her. Because she has been on my mind a mm-hmm. lot this week since that happened. She is really, so I really, I'm going to. And God always puts people in your head when, for a reason. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm like, okay, I, I need to be intentional. I need to, like, if I'm, at the very least, I need to be praying for her every day. Yeah. So. But yeah, so that's the Women's March. Woo. Right, okay, so what are our fast, five, three, our fast three stories? Okay, so fast three stories really quick, you guys. First one is they found the Zodiac Killer. Um, they found him through another murder. <laughs> okay, did they find him like dead or alive? So he died in 2018. So ha- real quick, how did they connect the two? Um, you know? DNA. But, like, mm. how did they, like, how, though? Like, they're like, oh, we found this partial fingerprint here. Um, Let's see. Let me open up. I forgot. Um, Let me open up this. And I'll also, of course, I'll link it. Um, Let's see. Oh, this group is also trying to find D.B. Cooper. Do you guys know who that is? Is that the guy that stole all the money on the plane and then jumped mm-hmm. off? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so he was connected to five murders let's see potential suspects have been investigated um i'll leave the link so everybody can figure out how the exact uh, details behind that but i know it was dna and well, maybe you know we what? can do this as a true crime Yes. And also, too, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it might even be through those DNA services because, you know, they're finding that's how they found the Golden State Killer. And that's how they're finding a lot of so people who are the ancestry.com stuff like that, they're going to find your relatives that are murdering people. So just a heads up. <laughs> yeah, guys, I killed someone like five years ago. I haven't been caught. Don't do 23 and me. Yeah, tell your family. So that's literally, that's what's happening. Like people who have family members that are murderers don't know and they're doing their ancestry DNA and then the police are putting the DNA from unsolved cases into it and seeing the links and then researching from there. Oh my goodness. Interesting facts. All right. So another thing is, I don't know if you guys remember, but five zebras in Maryland, they escaped a Maryland farm. Um, It has been over a month and have not been found. I don't see how they, I, I just don't get how you can miss a zebra. I don't know. I'm curious where they are and if they're alive. This is, <laughs> this, this isn't funny, but kind of, they're the, they're like Brian Laundry. Yeah. Like everybody's trying to, <laughs> every, how can you miss a zebra in the, I mean, they well, would Brian stand Laundry's out. a little bit easier or a little bit harder to find. Like, he can shave his beard. He can put on a wig. He can put on a ball cap. He can That's find fair. a way to be unrecognizable. But a zebra is black and white with stripes. Right. Like, so, <laughs> I'm 
I'm also curious, like, is it, are they like in woods somewhere? They have to be dead by now, I'm sure. Because what do zebras or eat? Kidnapped. Or kidnapped. <laughs> okay. That, Let's find like, out. What do zebras eat? It's like grass. It's just like horses. So I guess they could survive in like woods. Yeah. Grass, sometimes leaves, shrubs, twigs, and bark. Yeah, okay. they can survive. I guess they are surviving out there. Well, yeah, they, they could be out there. I hope thriving. they remain free. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I hope really quick. I hope they remain free, and I also hope that they uh, reproduce, and then there's just a bunch of random zebras. Oh, my goodness. Like and Maryland. then that becomes their native habitat. Yes. Like, that's, and then, like, oh, 10 on, years later, <laughs> yes. like, there's still the zebras in their native environment. In Maryland. In Maryland <laughs> in the United States. God, please. Okay, so our last uh, Fast 3 story is R. Kelly's victims, now survivors, have finally received justice. He was found guilty on all counts for sexual trafficking. Um, the trial, so his sentencing will be in a couple of weeks. And honestly, this feels like such a win in general like this past year I just feel like we've been seeing so much justice it makes me so happy all of these people who are evil who have hurt people who have hurt women are seeing justice y'all if you google R. Kelly like who is R. Kelly Robert Sylvester Kelly is an American singer songwriter record producer and convicted sex offender. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Good. Good. I think that's a funny like, <laughs> sentence. Singer, songwriter, record producer, and convicted sex offender, R. Kelly. I, I will say the only song I know is I Believe I Can Fly because of Space Jam. Yeah, that's the I Believe that's I Can Fly. Him. Yeah, I know. So I just need someone to remix it so I can like sing it and not feel guilty. They need someone to read. Oh, and that Ignition song, but I hate that song. It's stupid. Yep. What so, Ignition right. song? Something on an Ignition. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'll, right. I'll send it to you later. Go so ahead. Our first story <laughs> is, would you starve your wedding photographer? So a wedding photographer um, did not get fed by the bride and groom and then deleted all their pictures and stormed off and left. <gasps> And it's been, like, the talk of the Twitter town. Yes, it's been, like, the talk of the town. <laughs> my goodness. I That's will say. so petty. My I know. wedding photographer did a post. And granted, like, we fed him at our wedding, but we also invited him and his wife because they're friends. But he also took pictures of my wedding. Oh, so, the P-Dad guy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, James P-Dad, he's a wedding photographer. He does headshots, school pictures, political pictures. He... Uh, real he's everywhere. Pictures. He comes to he's, Charlotte too. <laughs> yeah, he's like he does it all. Great photographer, but anywho, but he did made a good post about this. He said he is, you are hiring me for a job. I am there to take pictures. I'm not there to eat. I'm not there to be like a guest at your wedding. I know it's gonna be a long day. I know I need to pack my own food. Like, ever, like, he said, like, most, like, no photographer, he goes, for the most part, like, all the photographers I deal with, they, like, don't expect this treatment at all. Like, this is really ridiculous. Yes. Uh, so. He was like, okay, like, think about it. Like, the servers at your, like, at my wedding, we had, like, I mean, people served our food. I wasn't going to feed them. Like, if the catering people, like, fed them, then they fed them. Like, that's not my job to make sure they got fed. As a bride, like, it's not my job to make sure, like, the DJ got fed. Like, that's, like, what he's supposed to do. Like, he's there to do music. I'm hiring him for a job. It's like if you hire a plumber to come and fix your sink and he has to be there all day, are you expected to feed him lunch or come to fix your sink? No, because you hired him to do a job. So, okay. So at first I saw someone say that like culturally there's a difference, but hearing you, they're definitely like, I cannot imagine not feeding the DJ or the photographer or if the plumber's there all day, of course I'm going to feed. Like in my head, I'm like, why would I not feed him? But, but I think that's, but, but I think that's a cultural Okay, but I'm difference. not going to pay $25 a head and then on top of that pay like 
thousands of dollars to have you take pictures and DJ my wedding. Well, so in my head, no matter what, there's always going to be one or two people who don't show up. Yeah. So I mean, if they there's can have that food, meal. I'm going to feed you, but I'm not planning ahead of time that I'm going to feed you. See, I, in my head, I don't see a scenario where they wouldn't be fed. And like, I, I didn't think about the $25 ahead. So I guess, you know, if I do have a traditional wedding, like, I would not a, include them though. Yeah. Well, you're not a guest at my wedding. I'm hiring you to do a service at my wedding. See, now, I... like, you shouldn't, here's the thing, like, you shouldn't expect it. I'll offer it to you. Be like, hey, we'll feed you. Don't worry about it. Like, I went and I did video for one of our friend's weddings. And I had no expectations of them feeding me because I was not an invited That's guest for the wedding. So crazy. But like, they had was... extra food and they fed me anyway. Wow. I, in my head, I don't, I don't see a scenario where I would, but once again, in that tweet, it was like, um, some, let me see if I can find it real quick. They were like, it's so interesting. This is the conversation because in like black homes, your grandma's going to be mad at you if you don't make sure that they, everybody has a plate. Well, no, but that's like that. completely <laughs> different. But like, as like someone, like as a photographer, like I'm looking at it from a business perspective because I don't, if I'm yeah, doing a but job they're helping for you. you. Like, yeah, you hired me. I don't expect anything but my payment. Now, you can put it in the contract that you have to get paid, but if it's not in the con, or you have to get fed, but if it's not in the contract, then they're legally not obligated to feed you. I'm leaning more on the side of Victoria because I agree. Like, if this is a stranger coming to my wedding, that's doing a service for me. Like I'm, and if I'm already paying you, why am I going to pay an additional twenty five dollars for your meal? Because and that's on the cheat you. side. That's on the cheat side. Twenty five. I just I no, just it's, it's it. But Mallory, it's more than just oh, they're helping me. They're doing a nice thing. No, they're doing their job. They're doing their service. I mean, like, that's fair. I I don't. I just I can't imagine not. Like I I would feel like a. Personally, I'd feel it's like, a like the person. the plumber, the mailman. It's once like, again, oh, they're helping me. Here's okay, but meal. once again, if my plumber is there all day, I would have a meal for him and some water. Like I, I just well, yeah, you offer it, but it's not like oh, I'm gonna bust up your pipes if you don't feed me lunch. No, 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 no. I I agree with that. Like I don't think like, that. But like that's like, what I, they did. It's like oh, I'm just gonna yeah. take pictures because you didn't offer me dinner. Well, no, you should have planned ahead. And it's like an extra to offer dinner. Now, okay, yeah, if they didn't know, offer, just... if it was in the contract, because you do sign a contract with your wedding photographer. If it was in the contract to feed them and they did it, then I can get why they're pissed. But you should never delete the pictures. That's awful customer service. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, if it were me and I was expecting that, I wouldn't delete the pictures, but I'd write a scathing review. Um, of the people who didn't feed me if I thought I was supposed to be fed. But no, that's very unprofessional because also too now your reputation is real. Well, I actually, I can't even tell. Like, what do you guys think? Everybody, oh, this will be the perfect question. So now, anyway, um, check on Spotify. We now have a section where we can ask you questions. So if you listen on Spotify, let us know what you think. Do you think that you should feed the photographer or you should not feed the photographer? Yep. All right, our next story was the world stopped on Monday. Like, it literally stopped. I didn't That's know what, what to do with like. myself. Facebook was down, Instagram was down, and WhatsApp was down. Um, Facebook and its family of apps, including Instagram and WhatsApp, were inaccessible for hours on Monday. It was like the whole day. Yeah. Taking out a vital communication platform used by billions and showcasing just how dependent the world has become on a company that is under intense scrutiny. Facebook apps, which include Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, and Oculus, began displaying error messages around 11.40 a.m. Eastern Time, users reported. Within minutes, Facebook had disappeared from the internet. The outage lasted over five hours before some apps slowly flickered back to life through though the company cautioned the services would take time to stabilize. All right, what was the picture that was at the very top of Instagram? Oh, 
Oh yeah, what was my picture? Mine was because I followed the hashtag NC poll, which is like the North Carolina politics. Mine was like some guy that's running for Congress. I'm like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> like, I don't want to look at his face. I'm trying to remember. I want to say it was um the ballerina with the red hair, Ariana's. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was one of her posts. I remember it was a pretty, very curated post. And I remember thinking, okay, this is nice, but, like, what else is happening? (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) But, okay, do you think, like, I'm like, okay, because it, like, the people could not get into the building. Like, just about to say, I'm trying to find that tweet. There was a tweet that, like, kind of was, like, it says something like, um, so you have to, to get from point A to point B, you need a map. And something happened where that map was just dissolved. Like, it was no yeah. longer there. Um, I'm trying to find that tweet, but whatever. Yeah, that's crazy. I think, so, okay, what are your theories? Because I have a few. Okay, so the first 10, 20 minutes, I was like, okay, this happens all the time. Facebook, like, you need to get yourself together. Hour two, I was like, well, we're definitely being hacked. Um, oh, I looked at Twitter. I'm like, because I'm like, nothing else is coming up. I guess let's look at Twitter. And it was like <laughs> the leading, like trending thing. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And like, I think I texted like um, me, um, Mel- I texted a group chat that I'm in and asked um, everybody like, hey, um, is y'all's internet or is y'all's Instagram down? Oh, yes. I thought it was my internet at first. So I'm me like, too. okay, like, I'm like, my everything else is pulling up on my computer. Yeah, same for me. Won't. Yeah, and I tried Facebook on the computer, and I was like, okay, and this isn't working. All right, this is strange. And I was like <laughs> in the middle of like, well, not a debate, but like I was uh, having an intense conversation with somebody. So I'm like, this guy blocks me. I cannot believe this. He blocks me. <laughs> and then, you know, a couple hours later, there was other people in that thread. And that's how I knew it was back because people, like, as soon as it was back, people in that thread were like, I have this to say. I have this to say. And I was like, okay. I, all right. It's back. I've Everybody's been typing arguing. my notes up all the comments I've wanted to say. <laughs> I think that's what they did because, like, legit, as soon, that's how I knew it was back because I was getting, my phone was, like, one notification buzzing after the other. So I definitely think by, like, hour two, I was like, we're, it's, hacked this is smart of I think Russia. It, it has to be hacked and they just don't want to admit it because Absolutely. it's like okay how can employees not get into the business they're like it's kind of like where you need like a spare key i'm like how do you not have a spare key mm-hmm. to get in like i truly believe it i truly think it was hacked or yes. it was them trying to stay down because like something happened in like dc biden and they're just like trying to hide something like they were, like, taking it down because they are like, trying to, like, go into, like, Afghanistan or something to, like, take out a terrorist and wanted to, like, eliminate all, like, communication or... They just wanted, like, everyone to, not, like, not be aware of what's going on. That's my Possibly. other theory. That's my other theory. Possibly. I'm trying to find... Mel, say yours. I'm trying to find this other tweet I saw that kind of said something interesting. Yeah, so for it. me, in the morning... I wanted to send Jerry a link to something, and so I got on my laptop to send the link easily through Facebook Messenger, and then that's when I saw it wasn't working, and I did the same thing of, like, let me try YouTube, let me try (laughs) Google, and I think just like the rest of us, I thought it was just me, and I thought, this is weird, and I just con- went on with the day, not knowing, thinking the problem would fix itself. Now, what does it say about us that we all thought it was us? <laughs> not that Are we all part. selfish? We're just all in our, like, <laughs> No, bones? it all shows that we don't have the best internet uh, provider because if it's happened before where it is literally us because we don't have a good internet provider. Wow, I thought of it more as like this philosophical question of like, we're all these selfish individuals living in our bubbles, not wanting to connect with each other. Yeah. Were you I, for- so, oh, really quick, 
oh, I can't find that tweet either. But anyway, what I was going to say is one thing that I like, at first I saw this, I was like, ah, yeah. And then I was like, well, no, this isn't right. People were like, if you're upset about Instagram, look at your heart. Oh my God. You're just... <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And then I was like, wait, no, I'm actually trying to build a brand so I can possibly work from home one day to be able to provide for a family. So you know what? Maybe not everybody upset with Instagram is upset because we're selfish. Maybe some of us are using it as a second source of income. But people have this whole like anti-hate for influencers. They talk about it on the toast. They have this yeah. like anti-influencer like mindset. Oh, hello there, children. Um, they have this anti-influencer mindset so like anything related to that people are just like mm. but yeah that's yep. all I wanted to say Mel you got something you want to tell the people yes so <laughs> it's that time of year again folks you know what's coming up we're collecting money for pads and tampons not yet menstrual cups and menstrual discs, but don't worry, we will get there. <laughs> For women in shelters in North Carolina, one of the least donated items in the shelters are pads and tampons. Bet you didn't know that. We are stepping in to fill the gap for these women. Last year, the goal was $200, and we exceeded that goal and bought 792 pads and 296 tampons. Let's surpass that goal this year. Fantastic. Yep, I will add, to you, if you ever do a mission trip outside of, like, the U.S., always take tab tabs pads and tampons with you because and extra like, underwear yes because that's like the stuff that like never gets donated everyone thinks about like water and food and like obviously that stuff that's like needed and like clothes but also like tampons and pads for women too guys um we need to be providers of that yep. we need to okay anyway that's All disturbing right. continue sorry all right our next story is activists ambush Senator Kristen Cinema in public restroom or yeah over immigration infrastructure. Senator Kristen Cinema was confronted by proponents of the Democrats' Build Back Better bill, who followed her as she entered a public restroom on Sunday morning. A video posted on the Twitter account of Living United for Change in Arizona, or L-U-C-H-A, an immigrant reform advocacy group, shows activists following Sinema on her way out of a classroom at Arizona State University. After she declined to speak to them, they follow her into the bathroom. We knocked on doors for you to get elected a woman, filming the encounter identifies herself as Blanca is her saying after the senator enters the stall, and just how we got you elected we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us Vic you give your opinion first her stuff <laughs> she's just trying to use the bathroom <laughs> let the woman use the bathroom and then have like a civil conversation mm -hmm. like my whole thing is like you know like you need to hold your elected officials accountable like that is like your God-given right being an American. You decide you're going to vote for them or whether you're going to vote for them or not, uh, whether you support them financially, door knocking, whatever. And this group has a right to be mad about her voting record. But there's a way to handle it. Um, and honestly, like... Besides threatening her, like, position, she wouldn't be listening to them at all. Because, like, and, and I think it's different because, like, okay, if a Democrat, like, if these activists did it to a Republican, then the Republican's like, well, you're not going to vote for me anyway, so, like, it just makes it worse. But I will say, like, when you, like, cuss an elected official out on social media, when you... Um, send them like hateful emails when you like threaten their lives all this stuff just because they're not doing what you want them to do like they're not going to listen to you mm -hmm. like if you respect them 
and show like if you show them respect they will show respect back to you and if you actually provide them with information saying okay like this is why I believe you should be like why you should support this bill because x y and z this is my experience on why you should support this bill x y and z that's the best way to be an activist and um get actually have your voice heard in dc or your state or wherever and like yeah like they have every right to vote this senator out Because she made a decision, she was voted on by the people, and she should be representing the people and the people's wishes. But following her into the bathroom on a Sunday morning is not the way to do it. And she's not going to, she might give you the time of day just to get you out of there, but in the long run, it's not going to help. No. I think it shows where we are as society that there's no limits now. Yeah. I mean, even to remember when all those people were outside of the Tillis's home. Yeah. For hours. And the and, and Tom was, I don't think Tom was even there. Susan was there. Yeah. By herself. I'm pretty sure, right? She's yeah. by herself. This is why anyone who's looking at running for office, well, first off, this scares people away from running for office. But also, you need, like, we got security cameras because of this. Mm. Luckily, we haven't had any issues like this, but, like, we've known people that have. And let's, yeah. And you guys are just starting out, like, not to, like, scare you or, like, oh, it's coming. But, like, you guys are just starting out. Who knows? Well, that's why we're being proactive on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it shows how far we've come from civility. 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 Yeah. It shows how far we've come. And like, you know, technically we are activists. And you know, I've I've told you guys how I feel about the word activist, how I cringe at it now, but we are activists. So like we understand like this is I've voted for you for this. I want you to do this as your constituent. Um, you have disappointed me because you have not done this. We understand that, but I mean, I cannot imagine walking into the stall, into following someone into the bathroom to get my point across. And I mean, how effective is that? People aren't even talking about what she, like, wants them to talk about. They're talking about what she did. And they're talking, like, and then also, too, like, talking about, like, women and their protection. Like, you should have privacy in the bathroom. Yeah. You have no idea what she was going through. She should have had privacy. That's just... That's what drives me crazy about, like, like this like type of activism it's you think it's effective and you're going to extremes but it's not no it doesn't help at all I've heard this story like three times I still have no idea what she was trying to be activizing for all Uh, I know is infrastructure there we go all I know is she was upset or all I know is she followed a woman into the bathroom and how inappropriate that was like, your point doesn't come across. All we see is you doing crazy outlandish exactly. things. Exactly. Your point, like, they're not going to actually stop and think about your point. They're going to be yeah. like, they're going to do what they can to please you, get you out the door, and then do what they believe is the right thing to do. Yep. Mel, what are you thinking? Um, I just think it's an invasion of privacy. And I hope they let her do her business before they started talking to her. Like, I'm just imagining her sitting on the stall and they're like, excuse me. Um, Well, okay. Can you imagine if she's just like, okay, say she's trying to like poop. Like, I like, I wouldn't be able to. Like, can you imagine be like, okay, this person's at stall. Like, I was trying to like hold it in. Yeah. I can't even imagine, like, some girl, and you need to vote for it. I'm just like, I just, I need to use the bath. Like, that's such a- <laughs> hey, bad sushi last night. Yeah. The bathroom. <laughs> that's such an invasion of privacy, like you said. It's it's just so, like, ew. It's not effective. Like, it's not. And because and, I see it all the time, especially when it's activists from your, the other party. Like, it's like- it's awful. Like, yeah. it's what they said. It's And it's, like, no, like, you, like, you can, it's just, it's frustrating seeing how 
like activists from the opposite party like treats like politicians like I, I think I've talked about this before like one of our friends is an elected official and these activists made fun of him doing pull-ups and it's like he did like 30 pull-ups also and, just a side note like that's exercise I just like there's so many things you can make fun of people for yeah. but and, and a lot the of the things. times it's like and too it's like okay like if the elected official provides like factual evidence that is like okay this is why I'm not voting for it this is like the facts behind it and you just like get emotional about it like that's not gonna help like if you truly is like okay like if they give you facts you should find a way to get facts back that counter the point but it's like and that's like a lot especially these like democrat activist groups is like oh well factually like that is a baby in the womb you know it's like they just like get it's so emotional yep but all right so our next story is a pa lawmaker proposes parody legislation that will require vasectomies the satirical bill would require men to undergo vasectomies either after their third child or once they turn 40 pa house representative christopher rabb proposed parody legislation on october 2nd that would require men to undergo vasectomies either six weeks after the birth of their third child or once they reach 40, whichever comes first. According to Rapp, the bill is inspired by the ongoing public debate about abortion and women's productive rights. He believes men should take responsibility for the part they play in women's pregnancies. This bill would also allow Pennsylvanians to take civil action against men for unwanted pregnancies and offer a $10,000 reward to those who report men who have not complied with the statute within this set time frame to authorities. As long as state legislatures continue to restrict the reproductive rights of... <laughs> cis women, trans men, and non-binary people, there should be loss that address the responsibility of men who impregnate them, Rab said. Okay, did he, like, what does it mean by it being a satirical bill? Um, I think everybody knows he's just doing it to, this is political theater. This is, yeah, this is directly, okay. like, in, in contrast, like, to make fun of the Texas heartbeat law. Yeah. Because he it's the same, it. he's, this he's, is a, a civil action um, and that's the Texas heartbeat law. It's a civil action. The mm-hmm. reward is $10,000. And so same yeah. thing of if an abortionist is- were, to, were to perform an abortion, um, they'd have to pay $10,000 as their mm-hmm. punishment. So yeah, this is satire. Well, this is so stupid. Let me just say a vasectomy. I'm, I'm against vasectomies. I, I think that it's it's unnatural it's against the way how god created the human body um unless it was purely for health reasons don't know what those would be anyways but a vasectomy is completely different from the intentional ending of a preborn human's life tell us Period. Why. thank you tell us why melanie well abortion is the intentional suctioning dismemberment poisoning starvation of preborn humans it kills humans in the womb and a vasectomy <laughs> keeps from sperm ever meeting the egg so sperm and egg are parts separate that when they come together they may create a whole so it's, this is just so stupid But I agree. I agree with the idea that men need to take responsibility. And I believe that it's really this pro-abortion culture, this um, sexualization culture that tells men, hey, your girl, she just needs to be on birth control. And if your girl gets pregnant, you just need to take her to get an abortion and you're good. So I agree with the idea that men need to be responsible Mm -hmm. because i believe consent to sex is consent to the possibility of a pregnancy equaling new human life so i believe yeah men need to step up like that is something that we can all agree on pro-abortion movement but this is just plain stupidity this proposed bill it is and last thing because we need to wrap it up I'm going to say about this. I also think I hate seeing things like that because it is making a mockery of democracy. And I just, 
I love our country. I love the way it was set up originally. Um, but we, uh, I just, I hate this. This is so, you're making light of the job that we elected you to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're starting a new segment, um, your OG politic for the week. Um, and this spotlight is brought to you by Culture of Life, 1972. You can head over to www.col1972.com and use our code, those are the girls 1972, and get 10% off your purchase. And 100% of your purchase goes to pro-life causes. So a fun fact, this week in 1765, the little politic is delegates from nine of the American colonies met in New York to discuss the Stamp Act crisis and the colonial response to that. Isn't that interesting? To start us something new. I was just about to say something like that. <laughs> it's, this was kind of like where it began to, da, da, da. to change in the U.S. of A. We weren't really the U.S. of A yet. And but. I'm proud to be an American. Where I'm really so no I'm free. free. All right, y'all. Thanks, everybody, for listening <laughs> to... Um, those are the girls. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, review, subscribe. Uh, now on Spotify, you can answer our question. Let us know, should you feed your photographer? Um, also to make sure you comment on YouTube. And if you're watching or, or I'm sorry, if you listen on Apple, please give us a rate and review. We um, have and received subscribe. A, and subscribe. We've received some like a couple of negative uh not uh stars like i think it's like one or two stars obviously out of anger um so we're now to a 4.5 and we want to get back up to a five so Did help us reasons be- why no it, oh. i think it's just people found the podcast and like <gasps> conservative <laughs> and shared it with their friends well if you listen and didn't like like let us know what we did wrong right like it's just doing it because we believe a uh, baby's a baby Let's have a talk. <laughs> yeah. Listen to more episodes. Reach out to us. Um, we'll so provide you, you facts. <laughs> Just don't get emotional about when we're right. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, and if you do listen on Apple, please, 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 please give us a five-star review. If you think it's worth five stars, I think you probably do. And then um, review it. All right, you guys. Um, anything else, friends, that we need to mention? That's all I have. We good? We good? Have Um, a great week, y'all. Have a great week. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye.